Lakers. Let's see if they can cash in. Oh, Lamar Odom. How about that? It's Lamar Odom, Aaron Cohen, um, Delay Show. Got a special guest, my brother. Um, you know, since you were like 11 years old. Yeah, I know since like 11 or 12. It's years 11, old, right? It's 11. 11 years old. <laughs> I remember. Uh, shit, the best defender in the world. Defensive player of the year. To me. What year are you going to defensive player of the year, huh? 2004. 2004. Um, tried to beat us in the, what's that, Western Conference 2000, Finals? 2009. 2009. <laughs> Took us to seven games. Uh, man with a lot of heart, a lot of pride. Um, AAU together, LA Laker championship together, uh, no other Ron Artest. Welcome to the show. My dude. My guy. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir, man. Well, I remember I first played against you. It was at DS Park. Mm -hmm. We was the same height. I tell the story a lot, but we was the same height. Yeah. And then the next time we, Lamar came back. <laughs> I came back. Five inches taller. How old were you guys? I was 11 when I first met Lamar. 11, yeah. Then he came back six inches or five inches taller, and and everybody around the all the players that was the best in the city, mm. like yeah, y'all better step y'all game up, yo. Lamar's six six right now. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, yeah. yeah Lamar's yeah, exactly one week older than you. You guys are both yeah. born in New York. November, the same AAU team. November babies. Made it to the NBA, won a championship together. Yeah, we go back. Yeah, just kind of talk about your relationship. You know, growing up, I know you guys met when you were really young, but uh, yeah, what it was like growing well, up in, in New York. Uh, well, for uh, for me and him, we was like, uh, we were either like teammates or like rivals or going at it somehow, some way. I, I love playing against Ron. He always brought uh, the best out of me. And then we played together. It was like, um, especially when we was younger, it was like a match made in heaven, really. Because I was like the finesse and then he was like the power. You know what I mean? Both like highly skilled. Um, can dribble, both can handle the ball, both like to pass the ball, make our players better. Did you guys ever butt heads when you guys were young? Maybe a few times. Yeah, a few times, <laughs> a few times, but it was competitive. We yeah. were just trying to be the best player, you know, in, in New York City, so. How did you guys originally meet? Was it when you guys played in AAU? I met Lamar when he played with Aim High. Yeah. First on Kenny Smith team. Wow. He just met him on the court. And then he had another guy named Raheem Johnson who was like, yeah, he was a beast. better than all of us. Ooh. Yeah, this kid named Raheem Johnson. He was um, advanced. We was like in eighth grade, ninth grade. Every time I played against, I played with Raheem, he got like 25 or more. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was just yeah, he was like a, a natural, incredible. natural scorer. So when was the first time you guys actually met? I think it was like, we was like 11 years old. It was it was in the park, That's it was at crazy. a game. Yeah. At the park. Yeah. It, was at, it was at a playing game, we had a game. Yeah, it was playing in the He was playing with Darrell, Dion, Darrell was your point guard. Yeah, we was just young. Yeah, yeah I remember that. It was, I don't know who y'all other players was, but I remember the four. Yeah. I remember the four. And then uh, it was a great game, actually. It was a, I think y'all beat us by like maybe eight or something like that. Damn. But it was it was in Ravenswood. And then a couple years passed. And then we started to see each other throughout the year. I and Yeah. Another place. And then we started to play with yeah, each other. I and Sate, we used to go at it. I, I and Sate. Did you <laughs> win it? You won it? Was that? You won the championship? I yeah, I won the championship. I said, but you know, we brought, we brought Elamine. We cheated. We brought, yeah. we brought Khalil Elamine. Oh, that's right. We lost to get y'all in the semifinals. Oh, yeah. yeah, we lost to get y'all in the we semifinals. We brought Khalil Elamine in to play with us. Yeah, Hell so, of a game. Yeah, so you guys, were you guys always close or was it kind of like, all right, we're on the same team anymore, we don't really talk as much? Like, what was it like after you guys both made it to the NBA? I mean, well, after we both made it to the NBA, then it's kind of like, you know, you play your schedule and if we, if I see you, then I see you on the court. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's, it's always love. It's always you know love I mean? for sure. When I, when but what I, about when you're inside the those 48 minutes? I mean, then you, I'm gonna try to kill him like yeah. you gonna try to kill me. Because <laughs> you gotta think about, about it. Too. Like yeah. when we was at Riverside, even when we started to play with each other, practices was like it reminded me of my Indiana practices, mm -hmm. and then also reminded me of our Laker practices because yeah. those was tough. Yeah, you know what I mean. So when we was at you know 13, 14 years old. We was competing. Yeah, we going at it. We was in practice like we wasn't him, him, Elton, Reggie right. Jesse, Eric yeah. Barkley. Nobody was, it. nobody was like buddy, buddy. But we was cool with each other. <laughs> yeah, we cool, but you know, it's but like, not in practice. Right. I mean, that's yeah. I mean, that's how Kobe would always talk about how in practice is when you really should even go, you know, as as hard as in the game or even harder to push your teammates. But um, but then also to add to that, so, yeah. um, and we grew up playing team ball because we always knew on our team. The Riverside Church team, Elton was always the best. 
because Elton was always getting the most points and just like dominating. Yeah. Lamar was always second best. Like Lamar was bringing the ball up, point guard to whatever. Then me and Eric was like right there. You know, nobody average. I no, looked at the average one time. Nobody average over Elton average fourteen. I did. I did wow. all the stats. Yeah, L average fourteen the most. Right? L so average fourteen. You was second, and then me. He was third. He yeah. was a bucket getter though in, in high school. Yeah, he was. He was. He was underrated yeah. as a pro too. So. Yeah, yeah for sure underrated. Right? Definitely underrated. Is he a GM now or something? Or was he, he in front, front office? Front office in, in, in Philly, right? Philly, yeah. Guys still close to them. <laughs> that's crazy. Yo. That's our guy. Man. Yeah, yeah, that's our guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He ain't going nowhere. A quick announcement: We had Meta World Peace sign a jersey, and I'm gonna give it away to one lucky follower. All you need to do is subscribe to the Late Show on YouTube and comment on this video, and I'm picking the winner in two weeks. Now let's get back into this video. Kobe had a statue unveiled this month, and we found out that it's gonna be one of three. Uh, I want to kind of hear what you have to say about Kobe, what he meant to the city of LA. We'll we'll get into you know your battles and being on the same team as him. Mm -hmm. But what did he mean to you and the city of LA? Right. So to me, I played against Kobe for the first time with Kevin Jackson in Providence. I remember they were saying he's like the next Grant Hill. He was playing well. Sham Gosh, Aim Holloway, Raheem Johnson on the team. Mm. Skip Edwards. And I remember playing against Kobe um, at that age and then seeing him grow. Then he's going, he get drafted. Then I get to the league later. I, I met him rookie year. We played against each other rookie year. He, he wasn't, you know, he was a rookie. Remember right. his, he was a second year player or whatever, third year player. Then he started to advance. We started to bloom, you know, blossom late. Then I was, you know, talked about as one of the, the best wing defender in the league. Then you had these incredible wing offensive players. So, but I never got a chance to play against Kobe in my prime because I was suspended mm -hmm. and it was always like the suspensions and missed the games. Then I come to the West, you know, Kobe's still, you know, doing his thing. I get to Sacramento and we had a chance to play. Right. Finally, we got a chance to play four times a year against each other. Obviously, he always got the better of those games, mm -hmm. you know, but I was able to compete, you know, against Kobe, then the Houston Rockets series. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, with Kobe, obviously he was w just way more skilled. But I thought as a, from a heart perspective, I thought, you know, we were very competitive. So I, I think he did enjoy, you know, the, the confrontation, honestly. I think he did enjoy it. He thrived in it. Right. Some people didn't thrive under confrontation. Yeah. Kobe, <laughs> Kobe thrives in confrontation with, yeah. no matter how physical I got with Kobe, he would thrive. And then when we got on the same team, but I missed it. Your, your confrontation is the reason I think probably what landed you in LA. I am, maybe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Naturally. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I didn't well, even think they wanted me. They, I, I, I was at SLS. I was just partying. It was June 30th, and we get a call at 12.01. And when they said, like, the, the Lakers want to talk to you, my first reaction was just like, for what? Because <laughs> I would be just lost. Yeah, they just yeah. beat you. And all so that. I'm like, yeah. I don't, I'm not trying to go to dinner with nothing. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then they was like, they was like, yo, they might want you on the team. And then I'm like, I'm like, what the F? Yeah. I don't know if I can curse on your podcast. Right, you can do it. Yeah, you're good. But that, I think that's the respect that uh, Kobe and everybody had for you after that series. That was incredible. You know I was saying, so how 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 real you were as a as a player. Yeah, I want to break that down and get your take on that series because um, it was such a physical series in 2009. Lakers and the Rockets. It went seven games. I got to go home and watch that series. No, I was I was rewatching it last night. Actually, yeah. it was crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> Game two. Remember, Kobe elbowed you. The refs didn't see it. You came back at him and like whatever. He ended up getting tossed. Mm. And then game three, you was, I think it was like the last minute, you elbowed Powell and you got ejected from that game. So it was an like extremely mm. physical series. It went seven games. And that was the, I think it could have, you can speak to this better than me, but was that the toughest series? Because you guys beat the Jazz in five. Yeah, the them Houston, in seven, the Houston, Nuggets in six, the and then Houston Magic five. The Houston series was, uh, was our toughest series that year. That was 2009. That was 2009. Yeah. yeah, the first championship. TickPick is the official ticket partner of The Late Show. On TickPick, there are no service fees, so the price you see is the price you pay. TickPick has the best prices and the same seats as the other sites, except cheaper prices. I have season tickets, but every time I'm on the road, I always use TickPick. Use code LATE for $15 off your first purchase on TickPick, $99 or more. Again, code LATE. Let's get back to the episode. 
Yeah, that yeah, was the Houston was series incredible. was our toughest series. That was a yeah, had Scola too, right? Yeah, he was a mother. Yeah, Yao, yeah, yeah. Batty, Yao right? broke his foot. I used to I hate. Remember. I used to hate Scola. Then Kyle Lowry's on that team too, Kyle right? Kyle Lowry, a young Kyle Lowry. Hey, so kind of speak he about was, that series because that was just like the most. That was one of the most physical series ever. Game seven. Yeah, that was my best series I've ever had as a player. Um, and it was it was such an honor because like I played against Dwayne Wade in the playoffs when you, when, when Al Odom was with right. the Heat. I had a chance, you know, but then I get suspended and, I, and all my rivalries that I'm developing, like with Paul Pierce, I played against Paul twice before LA Lakers in the playoffs. So I wasn't able to create any rivals. You see what I'm saying? So, and then I wasn't able to be seen in the playoffs. I was playing really well throughout my career, right. but five years, five of those years, four of those years, I missed the playoffs. Really? The first year we got there with the Kings, kind of, we was in last place. I got there in February, we go to the playoffs, play pretty well. But then after that, they fired Rick Adelman, got rid of Bonzi. So now I'm out the playoffs for four years until I get to the Rockets. I was 29. So for me, that was my that was the best series I've ever had. And I was like, finally, like I had a really good series and I could at least show for what I worked for yeah. as a child. I got something to show for it, you know, finally. So that 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 series is probably my favorite. Cause obviously when I got to the Lakers, you got Kobe Powell. Than the rest of us, yeah. right? Yeah. So you got the rest of us, all the rest of us. So oh, really? you just never know when your night is gonna come. Right. Which I don't know how Lamar dealt with that, honestly. But because my first year with the Lakers, I was struggling. Yeah, You're I was only averaging. You were struggling. I was only averaging five, seven points. I'm not used to. I've never averaged five. Yeah, well, seven I mean, you came from Houston. You were the guy in Houston. Yeah, yeah. It's you, the, you, it's the, now, but the triangle offense. That you, you spoke about. You were the sixth man. You when well, you came to LA, it will, you know it restricts you. <laughs> you know, in, in, in certain ways, you just can't get the ball and clear it out. And shit like that. You know? Right. How are you right, able to buy into it? Because I know you came from Houston and you got to come here. I know Lamar spoke about buying his. Well, the, the easy thing was Lamar was there, mm -hmm. but then I know I asked, I asked for a trade. I remember I asked for a trade <laughs> early in the season. You got <laughs> yeah, yeah. No way. Yeah, because I, I just couldn't mentally deal with it. But then I spoke with Dr. Buss. He's an incredible human. Mm -hmm. RIP Dr. Buss. And he was like, You come here to win. You know, and I'm like, that's true. So then I wanted to just master my position. Right. It took me a while to kind of get used to it. I'm, I want to do the best I can in my role. I remember in the, in the finals, I was I was I was I was ready. Kobe passed through the ball. <laughs> <laughs> one game I only got two shots. I remember being in Boston, I got two shots. In the finals? Yeah, it was cool. And, and at that point I was like, man, I was finally okay with it. Yeah. But it took me a long time to be like, yo, and then playing with Lamar, when we played against with each other. We, we we never had 30. Maybe you had 30 a couple yeah. of times, but it was like 15, right. 20, 16. Yeah. So I know how to play team ball. Yeah. You know, and Lamar sacrificed more than a lot. Team ball is gonna be, you know, get I mean, you that, a that's jury. What, that's what you got. I mean, you got everyone's gotta buy in. Prize picks is the most fun I've had winning up to 100x my money this NBA season. All you need to do is select two or more players, pick more or less on their projection, and place your entry. If you have skills, you can turn $10 into $1,000 with one entry. I personally love selecting more on LeBron for points and more on rebounds for AD. That's been my sweet spot. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what makes prize picks the number one daily fantasy app. PrizePix offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday, where every Tuesday PrizePix discounts a player's projection up to 25%. PrizePix now offers Apple Pay for quick and easy deposits. Go to prizepix.com and use LAID for a first deposit match of up to $100. Start playing PrizePix daily fantasy made easy. Let's get back into the episode. You know, you said it. I mean, Pal said it. When Pal got traded to the Lakers, we had him on a couple weeks ago. He oh, yeah. Said, yeah. He said when he came to the Lakers, he accepted his role. He, like, he was not going to be scoring really 30 a night because he's playing on a team with Kobe. Right, 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 right. But, um, I mean, I want you to kind of speak about that. Like, you come into the Lakers. What was your first conversation with Kobe like? You know, I know you said you were partying at the SLS. Who called you? I got a call from, uh, it was Mitch Kupchak. <laughs> Mitch Kupchak. <laughs> Shout out to Mitch. Mitch Kupchak, man. I know. I love Mitch. Um, but my, I, my first conversation with Kobe was, um, it was really brief on the phone. He was like, it was maybe three minutes. Maybe less, honestly, but that was it, man. I know, I know, I know the triangle. Um, I'm pretty cerebral, so for me, it's like, okay, what do you want, coach? How are these players playing? And just go to work, like hustle. I don't need to talk to anybody <laughs> to execute. Yeah. You know, I mean, we'll, we'll execute every now and then. Maybe something happened. You'll, you'll, you'll go back door mm -hmm. or do this. But for the most part, 
L's IQ's up here. My IQ up here. Kobe IQ up here. How There's nothing man. much to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> but to go play. <laughs> Mark, do you have any role into Meta signing with the Lakers? I mean, they were he they knew we was boys. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm pretty sure we probably talked that summer because I know he was a free agent. Yeah. And, you know, I'm a dude. I want to see him win. You know, if I win, he win. Man. Right. We all win. Because yeah. he was kind of repla replacing Trevor Ariza. Yeah. I know Kobe said this. That um, he called you and you guys were talking and Bro. he said, you know, you're not here to fuck around. Like, yeah, like he we're said here that. to win. Like, <laughs> um, to kind of fill that void when Trevor left. Where did Trevor? You said Trevor went to Houston. Was he? Where did he go? Where, we we swapped. Yeah, swapped. Trevor went to Houston. Right? Yeah, we yeah. swapped, <laughs> which is surprising. I thought I was going to go back to Houston. Then I was trying to go to Detroit. I was trying to go to Indiana. When you requested the trade in 2010. No, or? when I after that series, I was trying to either stay in the Rockets because I like to stay where I'm at. Right. I'm not trying to. I want to compete, right? Mm -hmm. When they didn't bring me back, which is unbelievable, then I tried to go to Indiana because I wanted to redeem myself in Indiana. Mm -hmm. yeah. But you know, the the job, you know, damage was done there. Right. Then I tried to go to Detroit because I wanted to create another story. That's I felt crazy. like winning in Detroit would have just been crazy. That would have been <laughs> wild. Bro. That's like, been these crazy. people don't understand storytelling. Yeah. They didn't even get <laughs> it. They, it was way over their head. They was more worried about. Something that happened in 2004. Yeah. I'm like, yo, let's create some massive energy in the league. And they didn't get it. So then at that point, I didn't even want to play in the league. I wanted to go. Uh, the Knicks wasn't an option because Donnie Walsh went to the Knicks. Well, he was my GM at Indiana. Yeah. So he didn't want to relive that yeah. moment. So the Knicks was way out. So then at that point, I was just trying to go overseas. I told my agent, I didn't want to play anywhere. I want to go overseas. So we called Greece. We called Angola. Literally, I was like, cause I wanted to compete against everybody. I didn't want to play with them. Mm -hmm. But then when those options was like not looking good, almost went to the Cavs, almost went to the Cavs. Yeah. Was LeBron on that team at the time? Yeah, yeah, I spoke to LeBron, almost went to the Cavs. Mm. Um, how, did, how did that fall through? It was interesting because I just wanted to compete, honestly. So I, was, I wasn't necessarily looking to play with another star because I knew how great LeBron was going to be. Right. You know, I knew how great D-Wade was. And my, my whole thing in my career was like, I was always trying to beat all stars. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Whereas a guy like Kobe or LeBron, they're just trying to be the best. They're trying to beat Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, right. and yeah. I'm just trying to beat them. Yeah. So that's how I measure myself. So that was why the LeBron thing kind of fell through. Um, and then when I realized I had no more options, and then we was like, because no teams really wanted me, I was a liability. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just got suspended in the playoffs. Right. And then when um, when the Lakers called, um, when the Lakers called, then... I was like, I'm, I, you know, I'm not past. I didn't give you. I didn't even expect the Lakers to call because yeah. yeah, they just beat you. I mean, you wouldn't. They don't even need me. They, they they're winning. You know, they got Trevor. No matter who they had, like they don't yeah. need me. So I was like shocked. No, nah, but they no, nah, they definitely needed you. Not really. Like, if, if, Trevor, were, if they were losing Trevor, nah. If Trevor, Trevor, if Trevor would have been there, the Lakers would have won it again. Like that's just the facts. Because I was doing the same exact. Maybe I was a little <laughs> bit more physical than Trevor. Yeah, I was. Well, telling, what do you think about I that? Was, no, I was telling. Um, I was telling uh, Aaron before you came, like y'all both tough, but in, in in different ways. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like Trevor is more of a finesse, tough, streak the floor, run the floor. Ron is Big more of a tough. Yeah, right. I mean, My so chest to your chest. You know what I mean. Half court, lock you down, type of tough. Yeah, maybe but maybe more mentally tough. You know what I mean. Yeah, I I um, didn't think I didn't think you know. Under, in that role that me and Trevor was playing, yeah. I felt like he would have been knocking. I think he would have knocked down more shots. I brought some defensive mm -hmm. stuff to the table. Uh, a lot yeah. of defense. It was, but yeah, it was a lot of defense. Yeah, but you, I remember him and Paul Pierce the first play of the game. Game what was the game was the game one. Game one. Game one. They like throwing each other on the floor and shit, playing <laughs> wrestling and all that. Huh? WWF. No, I was, gonna, I, was, Paul. I was gonna bring that up because uh, I know one time I think you were in Indiana. You pulled the shorts down in the middle of the game. <laughs> yeah. I was and I was like, bro, was that planned or like you just like out oh, in the moment? Like, well, you know, Paul is tough. You know, so you know, Paul is incredible, man. Yeah. So in Paul's prime, no matter how hard you played against Paul, like I had some success against Paul, but he got off too. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying. He so play I, at his own pace and all that. You yeah, know, play like um like um Luca tempo. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he's like six seven. Bigger. Handle shoot, bigger, word up. Yeah, bigger and you know, tough. And yeah. 
Sometimes it's like, yo, he he's scoring on me. I, I'm I'm in his shirt. Maybe last game I had a good game against him, but today he's killing me. In that game he was killing me. So I was trying to do anything like just bother him. <laughs> Honestly, bro, I pull his shorts, shorts down, down, bro. He comes off the screen. Hits the three. That's the type of night he was having. He might have had 30 that night, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, I want to go back a little bit because I know we spoke. you spoke about your first interaction with Kobe when uh, you signed with the Lakers. What was it like with Lamar? You know, like it's your boy and you're fine because you're team up with him. Man, that was incredible. I mean, you got to think about it. Like Lamar won MVP his sophomore year in high school. I remember watching it on MSG next day. St. Raymond's versus Christ the King. Right. And Lamar had 36 and like a triple double, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you know, and we were on the same team. So I'm like, damn, I'm like, I'm never gonna win a city title. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have won it if Lamar stayed at Christ the nah, King. Nah, you know what I was thinking on my way here? Man, on my way here. We was won it and he wasn't there. <laughs> on my way, on my way here, I was thinking about if I'd have stayed at Christ the King, Whew. right? I guarantee you, senior year, we would have probably played against each other. We would have. In the state? And the city championship. No, the city, yeah, yeah. My team was definitely going to make it to the city championship. And I know your senior year. Yeah, we didn't lose. Your, team was, your team was going to make it. But if you, we, we beat y'all by, y'all had us at the half. Yeah. You know, Kamal, Molly, Eric Barkley, y'all had a squad. And Lamar. They played y'all in the play the in the, in the, in the playoffs? Semis. Crazy King? Next, you had to get to St. Francis. Hmm. <laughs> I know he's sick too, cause that would have been a, <laughs> that would have been a game like a motherfucker. Yeah, that would have that would have had, and I would have. He won one sophomore year, so that's great. I got one senior year. If he's on that team, yeah, cause I lost maybe junior I year. Win. I lost junior year at the buzzer. <laughs> what, where, where, what team? Uh, we lost to not St. Ray's. No, we lost to Rice. We lost to Bevin. And oh, they won it that year. Yeah. yeah, they wanted that. Yeah, I missed the shot. At the, the buzzer, buzzer? Word. right Damn, in front of the rim, tough, bro. Boom, caught it in the crowd, laid it up, <laughs> teardrop. I should have boom. I'm looking at Molly like this, like how I'm looking at you. It's hitting the rim. Boom, 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 boom. It's like that Kawhi game winner, huh? Came That's Molly. crazy. I was tight. <laughs> Yo, I was tight. Oh, that, we was number yo, two in the country that year. That hurt more than 2008. Yeah. What? Yeah. Those games are important. I was those... a kid, bro. I know, bro. You're in the NBA. I was a kid. Nah. And it adds to your legacy. That like... hurt. That that's you. I would have been yeah. like a god in New York. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Sophomore year. Won a, was... Sophomore year. I won a yeah, championship. Nah. Then that year, if I hit the MVP. buzzer beater, and got MVP. The fuck? MVP, I was on the right. floor crying like a baby, man. That was crazy. Oh my gosh, yeah. that shit hurt. I can then... oh, I can feel the pain right now. Molly, I know if you're seeing this, Molly, Molly was with me that day. <laughs> I'm looking right in his face. Hey, we forget we had Molly on our Riverside team, right? Yes. Oh my goodness, that we team had a crew. Yeah, that team. We had incredible. a crew. Yeah. So, so we spoke about 2009. So you, you come to the Lakers. I want to set the scene. 2010 Western Conference Finals. The series is tied 2-2 against the Phoenix Suns. Remember what happened? I know you remember what happened. Oh, buzzer beater. Kobe put up an air ball. He oh, got the oh, yeah. The, oh, that's when he got the offensive rebound. My only two points. <laughs> that was the only two points. That was my only two. Take, take me to that I, game. I was, right? for, I was 0 for 9, 0 for 7. But you know, B. Shaw going to say, I'm like, yo, I'm off. B. Shaw, you got to shoot it. <laughs> you yeah, know, nah, B. Shaw. Because in the offense, if you don't shoot it, you throw me off. Right. Yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Rhythm. Yeah. So take take me through that. Like that game winner. Well, Buzzing the game here. was crazy because like I was I was playing bad, but I had to I was shooting in rhythm, so I was doing what the team needed. But I was off. And then you know, it was just like I didn't want to leave it the chance. Like, cause the only time you get to score sometimes is getting an offensive rebound. Yeah, because it's always three guys on the boards on yep. the triangle offense. And you gotta crash. It's Jeff, just like yeah. Elvin said. Yep. You gotta crash. So I just took a route, honestly. I was just trying to get in position, just execute and it, it was a tough series, and that was my first time ever hitting the game one. I, I was I was shocked. I'm like I'm like hold on, we just won the game. I ain't even realize I know, it. Bro, you we didn't won the game. game. I never had a game winner, <laughs> <laughs> and it was like I I didn't follow through this this hand pointing this way. This hand, <laughs> I just threw it up, and that's why nah, that was. I'm like yo, this is crazy. Then Lamar yeah. embraced me. Then I'm like yeah, I only had two points, man. That game. Is that really your only bucket? I was playing hard, but maybe I had five. But man. still, no, that's crazy. I was playing hard. Lamar, what was your point of view on that? 
I was just Ron being Ron, just finding the basket. You know, that was his IQ. I didn't even um, realize there was enough time to get a rebound. Just like Kobe's shoot at the buzzer. Finding the basketball at the right Crazy. time. And then uh, one series later, game seven versus Celtics. Lakers are up three with one minute to go. Kobe passes you the ball. You hit probably the biggest shot of your career. And you guys win the champ. Your own, your only championship. The Lakers go back to back. Take me through that shot. Yeah, it was crazy, man. Because uh, so Kobe, uh, Lamar was in the corner. Whoa, no, Lamar I was, was in, was in, in the corner. corner right there. If you, because if you didn't yeah. shoot it, I know the you swing was the coming. Right, the right I, corner. Yeah, I was gonna sh let that bitch fly. Yeah, everybody was gonna let it. Fisher was in that corner. Lamar was here. <laughs> he Did just, you think Kobe was gonna pass you the ball like realistically? Because he wasn't having a good game. But it's not about that. It was more about because I just going through that journey with the Lakers. Uh, I haven't been around that many locked in players. I was pretty locked in, but I was scattered. That everybody focused. So I remember in May, I was talking to Fisher and Kobe, and I was like, "How do y'all make big shots?" You know, and and this is right when Mayweather got hit by Mosley in May, when Mayweather almost got knocked out in May. Mm -hmm. So that happened too. So I remember when Mayweather came to the game. It was like the next week, and I was like, "Yo, how did you get past that adversity? Like your knees buckle." Mm -hmm. And I'm trying to figure out ways to give me some confidence. Because this is my first time playing in the finals. Yeah. So, you know, who knows what's going through my head. So, you know, between that conversation I had with Mayweather, the conversation I had with Fisher in the back of the bus, because it's like you can teach somebody how to draw, but how do you teach somebody how to make big shots? That was just conversation. But I really wanted to know, because, you know, Fisher's like a, he's almost like, you know, incredible. He's like a, almost a guy. Like, yeah. The way he knocked down big shots. Yeah. When you yeah. know, when he opened, yeah, he like. It's like how do you? He, he clutched like a motherfucker. Yeah, he's just as much as Kobe. <laughs> Word is born. Just as much as Kobe. Well, that final season. Right. Tough, <laughs> yeah, whatever. He don't got the ball in his hands. Like, but I'm shit. Fisher against Utah. Yep. He hit some big ones, boy. Shit, Fisher is just Bro, like 2009 finals. He got that a big one game. Dick. We had two threes. Pause. Those last, <laughs> 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 well, he don't, he don't care. I know. I wanted to learn, man. And you see, I played. We played against them the year before. Lamar's hitting key shots, timely shots. Trevor's hitting timely, timely shots. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, damn, how do y'all do that? And then having that conversation, it wasn't about if he was going to pass. I was just squared up, waiting. And and that whole, I can take it to a moving. But Chuck Person was a coach on that team. Chuck taught me how to um, these little movements on the perimeter depending on where you at, how to catch the ball and shoot it. So my body was facing the basket. That's 2004. So that was just like, you know, being with Chuck and Larry in the gym. You know, Larry got my game right one couple summers with the Pacers. Honestly, you know, I was just waiting to see what happens. I didn't want to be like this. So I was just like, if he pass it, great. If he skip it to Fisher, all right, I'm going to go crash. Well, I think, you know, I give credit to Phil and um, his philosophy and our mental approach for the game, like they mentally prepare us to be in the moment, to be prepared to be in the moment. Yeah, yeah. So in, in a big game, you have to really be there mentally. Game seven. And what did, he, what did he say to you guys before that for that game specifically? Well, I mean, remember he wrote on the board um how many practices we had. Yep. Um, you know, what we put into it. And the mission was the ring. And I think it, you know, but mentally we were all on the same yep. page. You know, we meditated together and shit like that. Yeah, that's meditation is like a what form of prayer, right? So if we all praying together. Yeah, that's a, a strong force when you add the physicality to everything. It, you know, what yeah. I mean? What do you remember before that game? Well, I remember. I mean, I, we was down. We got it. We we, we tied it back up. We back home. Um, won a big game six, and then just that game, just you know, you got a chance to win. But Phil was like, he he would do these meditation sessions, lock, you know, turn off all the lights. You hear that little noise, you know, that little room noise you hear. Mm -hmm. yep. He even wanted you to block that out. <laughs> He's like, block out everything. This is like so. in the block room before the game. Not before the game, like a practice, practice okay. maybe a week before, okay. something like that. And you just you know, after you know, session after session. He prepared you for that moment. Yeah. Yeah, and and he speaking of Phil, he actually called you the MVP of Game Seven. Um, so what was that like? You know, hitting that shot, and you know Kobe trusting you, passing the ball. What was it like? You know, and what do you think? I know you said Phil in that interview. You're like, Phil was telling me not to shoot it, but I still got, I still shot it, and I made it. Like that was one of the funniest interviews of all time. Kobe Yo, Phil's the ball, incredible. Bro. I only could attest to this, but Phil's incredible because like in practice, he's trying to push the buttons. 
he pushed my buttons in practice a lot sometimes. And um, that was more, I was just super excited because if you look at all the emotions in practices from Phil pushing your buttons <laughs> <laughs> and then to leading up to the finals, you, you still got some, you still holding on to some, but it's like, wow, we won. Because of this man. Oh yeah, by the way, we did have a little drama in practice. <laughs> oh, you oh, you know, you a shoot and Phil would be like off. So Phil, <laughs> Phil would be on the Wait, bench. Bro. You'll be on the corner. You taking it before the ball leave your hand, right? Phil off. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? In practice? In the game, man. In the game. In the game. <laughs> <laughs> so Phil just messing with you the whole time. So it was a, it, it was a, um it was just a moment of joy, honestly. Um and I, I didn't uh, I didn't, you know, after all the stuff I've been through in the league, I didn't right. know if this day was going to come. I didn't know if this day was, and I won it with my guy. Yep. Yeah. I didn't know if this day, but this day actually is here. So at that point, I'm just like, oh my goodness. Yep. I still feel, so, at sometimes, not as much, but I still, you know, am excited that we won the finals. This is my only one. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I was going to bring that up because that was your second. Yeah. And a lot of players in the NBA agree that winning a second straight championship is harder than the original one. What's your take on that? Well, for us, it was definitely. I mean, that was the experience. You know, we won one in six, and one to the, the other one in seven. Um, those two series were completely different. You know, we kind of we won two thousand nine. It was four one. Yeah, but you know but I mean? it wasn't. I don't it was it was that it was four one, but the first game was kind of close. They could have won the first game. Yeah, the tell the story. The deficient um, into those shots, like that game, that series goes at least six. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but the, seven. the types of game were completely different. In what way? Um, Boston was a lot more physical. The Orlando series, we kind of kind of got to run our stuff. It was a lot free flowing. <laughs> we were on the break a lot. Yeah, you know what I mean. The um, Boston series was grind out, half court, 73, 89. Yeah, that was the final score. Remember Basketball games. games, you know what I mean? 79, 83, I think it was the final score of that, yeah. 2010. Um, like slow paced and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, you guys saw them two years before yeah. in the finals. So. But I want to. I definitely want to speak about Kobe a little bit. You guys were close with him. You guys won with him. Um and I want to speak about when he passed. I don't think I even asked you, um, but I want to start with Meta. Where where were you uh, when he passed, and what was that day like, and everything leading after that? It was wild, man. Because I, everybody remember the day. It was cloudy. Everybody remembers that day. And I live in the valley, so you know you hear the PJs, private jets, and you hear everything. I do remember hearing a chopper that day, which is like very still subtle to me, you know, and. To, I remember that day because it was called, you couldn't see nothing, right? And then I get a call from this guy who was, uh, I brought him to a Laker game one time. One time he wanted to meet Kobe. I brought him to a game, but most of our interaction has been on text message. He called me this morning. This one morning, he was like, yo, you know, I think Kobe passed away. I was like, what? Well, this don't even make sense. You know what I mean? So then I called, the first one I called was Lou Williams. First one I called. And Lou was like, yo, it's true. And Louis like knew I was calling. Then I called KG. Yeah. Then I called KG because I'm like, I need somebody to say something right. like, yeah. like somebody real, like this nigga, nigga playing with me right now. Yeah. So I called KG. First thing KG said, yo, this is real. I'm like, oh my goodness. And it, and it was just, you know, then after that, it's like, you know, that's it. You just mourning, you know, and it's just hard to believe. I, I was waiting for him to walk through. I'm like, no way. I'm like, I right. know he's about to walk through. My backyard right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy. And, and I was waiting for it, just waiting for it. Like, come on, I'm, you know, it, it was that type of day, man. It was, and it, it was just that type of day. It was, it was, it was probably one of the worst things ever. I did get a chance to see him. Like after, I'm really happy I got a chance to see him because when we were practicing with each other, we just getting ready for the game. Maybe everybody else had friends. Sometimes, oh, Lamar would be go with Luke. Sometimes to go get a sandwich. That was like one of your favorite things to <laughs> yeah, do. Oh, yeah. You know, so, but it was just like, I was able to spend a little time with him. You know, I got a chance to be with him this last year. I got lucky enough to be with him. Right, yep. Yeah, like, you know, some little time there. I got some autographs. He signed jerseys for all my kids, my mom, my dad. 
So I got, you know, six jerseys. We talked about some stuff. I had a chance to spend a little time with him, but, you know, um, you know, it, it just devastated me. It was devastating. Yeah. yeah. And here his daughter also was involved. And it's just it's, like it made everything worse. Yeah, devastating. Yeah, it's fucked Lamar, up. What was your I was, I was in um I was in Atlanta. And I thought it was just like a media like prank. That's what I thought too. Like TMZ. You know what I mean? My man who who that I was with who who just recently passed. Like he didn't even know Kobe. He was throwing up. So that just lets you know how much he meant to the culture. Uh, it was a horrible day. Did you fly to LA that day? No, I I was I stayed in um in Atlanta and I, and I just prepared to go to his memorial. That was in um <coughs> not crypto. I just hope we can get, you know, I think we should try to just get to a point where we can just appreciate, you know, and kind of celebrate his life. I think that's what Vanessa and the family want instead of to, you know. I mean, well, that's all that's left to do. Right. Celebrate his, the, the legacy that he left. Yeah, it's it's just surreal. It's, it's still surreal. It's, it's surreal, though. Yeah, you know? it's still just like, he, he feels so present. Yeah. That's what Lamar always says. Yeah, the energy is so still present. here. present. You know, it was just like, energy does transfer, you know. Maybe he know we need his energy here because it was it, 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 it was a struggle, man. I don't even know Kobe yeah, as well I, as these guys. When I first came back to LA, though, I could like I could like I could feel 100%. it like the like the everything the gut blow that LA took. The whole you know city, what I mean? It the whole was morning. It. it was nuts. Yeah. I mean, they, he's still gonna get two more um, statues. Yeah, I don't even think they. I don't even really think people have gotten over it yet. And I, I see that because how they came out for his statue. Like, they probably out there right now. They are, yeah. In the crowd, just like. I was at the game last night and everyone's around that statue. Like, looking up I mean, to yeah. the statue, you know what I'm saying? It was, yeah. shit was nuts. I was like, what he means to the whole town. I mean, you guys were fortunate enough to have a friendship with him, a bond with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to start with you, Meta. What, what do you think your favorite memory with Kobe was? It could be off the court, on the court, but what what is like the thing you will never forget? Like one moment. Yeah, definitely. People definitely ask the question a lot, but I think like I got a couple different moments. Um, you know, when you're in practice, even though he's a year older, only one year older than us, you're still trying to impress him. You know what I mean? So you're going hard in practice. When he's not saying nothing to you, you know you got his respect. You know what I mean? So I remember those moments. Um, I remember one moment towards the end of his career, he came to my, came to my room. He was like, uh, yeah, I need you to pull up those beats. He had, he had, he had a two pages of rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the, after he went, he was like, Jogo. And you know, Kobe is still Kobe. Like no matter how much we competed in practice, right. mm -hmm. fail asleep, but when he's in your presence, it's, I didn't even want to rap because I'm like, I'm not trying to battle against Kobe. And then I don't even think I can win, honestly. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I don't have nothing to say. Mm. I'm like, nah, I'm good today. <laughs> but that was a fun moment. It was just us like spending that type of time. And it was like, that was incredible to me. And then I think um, just visiting him in his office. I went to go see him one time in his office. I saw he was working on the books. And I was just asked, I was still in awe of his work ethic, honestly, because um, the way he was playing ball, and focus on business off the court. You know, when I was playing ball, I wasn't doing both. I was just balling. But I was, you know, so I was really picking his brain. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I was really appreciative of that moment. His last season, he was just fun, yo. You were, his last season, you know, he was just joking most of the time. <clears throat> like, typically, that's not him. Yeah. So I, I never saw that side. So it was kind of cool to, like, you know, uh, the rookies is there acting like full, you know, these, these young rookies. In 2007, 17, they way different than us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you got 38 year olds with these 19 year olds, and it was a crazy dynamic. Uh, he just gave into it, and he really? was having fun with the rookies for sure. The whole year. Yeah, man. He was. He still. He he competed, but he wasn't as hard on them. Mm. You know what I mean? So that was like cool to see too. That's nice. Yeah. I, I didn't yeah. know that. That he like kind of chilled. A yeah, little he bit. took his foot off the gas for sure. Yeah. Yeah. But that last game though, he didn't. Oof. That that last nah, game. He what a up. way to go out, huh? I was there. 
Oh my yeah, goodness. I know you guys are both there. Yeah, that's yeah. some crazy shit. Yeah. That's storybook in itself. Not alone is just his that's career. Right just, right crazy. just the way he ended it. Mamba out the situation. Crazy. Legendary, only way. Crazy. My fucker has 60. What are you talking about? <laughs> like, it doesn't matter how many times you shot the ball. Not like, not points. 30. Like, 30 would have been great. 30 would have been real. incredible. Yeah. 40 <laughs> amazing. 50 dope. 60? Yeah. Crazy. It was crazy. Yeah. I remember again, I, I remember that game. I'm like, all right. I knew he was he was struggling that whole year. So I'm like, all right. He, I was his sub. Mm -hmm. And then he's ready to go back in. So I was playing five minutes, two minutes of games, right? Yeah. So I'm just like... I'm gonna get at least seven minutes today. <laughs> I didn't get. I played zero minutes. None. None. He he was zero for seven coming out zero for seven. Yeah, I remember. So I'm like, all right, let me get ready. Yeah. <laughs> he need a break. <laughs> then he started cooking. That was it. The rest was history. And in the last quarter, I just submitted to the bench. <laughs> I'm like, this is over. I'm not getting. It. Let's go. Yeah. But yeah, it was a, it was it was crazy. It was unbelievable. Were you talking to Kobe during the game, or you just like let him be in his zone and keep going? Like, what was what was he like during that game? I mean, he's he's good. He's he, you know. Mm. I'm not gonna say, hey, work harder. No, I'm saying like, what I've was never, he like? Was he like? Because it seemed like he was, he was super locked, locked in. in, like super locked. He, in. Just just pat him on the back, man. That's it. Nothing, nothing to say. He locked in. Just good job. <laughs> crazy, Lamar. Yeah. Do you have a do you have a memory that where all three of you guys were involved? And then you guys, either one of you can remember on the road, you know, practice store, anything. I know. We were hard in practice, though. Yeah, we did. Our practices were, like, very competitive. I mean, that's the only way you're going to win a championship. That's why it hurts my heart to hear that the Lakers, they don't even really practice as much. Yeah, it's kind of wild. Well, we're going to talk about the Lakers practice. soon. We'll talk about the current Lakers soon. We'll, but, yeah, just wanted to wrap up the little Kobe segment. Um, but, yeah, we can move on. In 2011... You change your name from Ron Artest to Metal World Peace. What was the yeah, inspiration what you, behind yeah, that? Yeah, what made you? I'm, I'm your man. Like, what made you? <laughs> <laughs> what made you choose Metal World Peace? Like, what was your? Where was your mind at? To, it was still because like, I ain't the like the most common name, especially in the hood. <laughs> yeah, I, I know Metal World Peace. Yeah. Raheem would have been more fitting. <laughs> Yo, it was just like I was still going through a lot. Like I was still, I was still in my head. I was in my prime. My my energy was still there. Obviously, so people couldn't really see how good I was when I was with the Lakers. You could see it the year before. That's who yeah. I was, mm -hmm. yeah. right? But so I was going through a lot, honestly. And then I also was like, I submitted to being a role player because mm -hmm. I was I knew I was going to be here for the next couple of years. I'm not going to get better when my contract is up. Yeah. So I submitted to like, I'm just going to be a role player for the remainder. I thought we would get to the finals a couple more times, honestly. Um, so that part was cool. And I started to become more content. Um, and I wanted to just do something else in my life. And I felt like the narrative people set, you know, I had to fight against that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I'm taking on people I don't know. I can't see them because behind closed doors, you don't know what people say. Yeah, Ron Artest had his own yeah, yeah. problems and shit like that. And I, but I'm trying to do something else, right. yeah. you know, impactful, a little business. Mm -hmm. So I said I need to, like, move move my messaging away yeah. and move my own internal self towards my trajectory where I want to go in my life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like not the narrative, you know, that people have or why they would want me on their television show. You know what I'm saying? Or, yeah. you know, hey, come on my show and act the fool. Like, right. nah. Right. You know, I want to I want to have impact. You know, we, we where we come from, right. we gotta inspire these people behind us. So it was the whole thing like getting off this one channel one, which was, you know, in, you know, entertainment and Whatever it is to move into call it channel two, which is social impact. Just trying to be there for people because we need it. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't have it. You know, at certain points, we grew up. Me and Lamar grew up similar, mm. and that was just that, that. That was it, man. Just like, a, and I needed to find some type of calmness because it wasn't. Yeah. And then being with Phil, right? Phil, you start meditating, you start doing all this stuff, and I'm like, damn, I was already getting into Buddhism. I was getting into, I was doing therapy at that whole, the whole time. Yeah. So when you combine that all, it's like, you know, you almost want to be like Phil. Yeah. You know, like, you know, you almost, and then you win a championship with being calm. Right. Yeah. Like you don't win. They say, you know, Ron Artest, it's a, it's a gift and a curse. He need that energy to win. But that energy is getting people in trouble. Like, yeah. 
I don't want that energy to win. Yeah. I want to play focused. Yeah. You know, and then and being that year, 2010, with Phil, that had a lot to do with like just staying focused on that type of energy. You know, and I, I fell in love with that season. Re really, mostly that. That the meditation was incredible. Yeah. What you think about Draymond Green? Yeah, Draymond. Draymond. I, I like Draymond. I think. Um, you know, I kind of wish I was on his team. Honestly, he at times. Misunderstood. Time. You think? No, I don't think. I think he's uh, he from the hood. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's from D Detroit. Yeah. And you know, I'm he. You know, at sometimes I'm like, I thought he was gonna really hurt his career. Mm. You know, by because the assault. You know, you see what happened. The other boy from Detroit just went, got arrested. Yeah. Yeah. All the stuff. You know, even my incidences. I've never. There's nobody that ever was injured yeah. <laughs> from any game that I had. Mm -hmm. We might have had rough confrontations, mm -hmm. you know. So I was like, "Damn, you know, one of these, you know, movements could hurt somebody." And I'm like, "Damn, he gonna, he got television." So I was like, I was more uh, wanting him to see and just finish your career. Yeah, you're a great player. You're a great winner. He gonna be in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's nothing for him to prove. He don't gotta prove how tough he is. Uh, so I was more like, like, you know, just do your thing just and just basketball. ride it out. Yeah, yeah. I respect Draymond. Yeah. I like Draymond. Yeah. Do you have any communication with any guys in the league right now that you kind of maybe mentor or you're in close contact with? Like, it was a point in time I was talking to some people, mentoring them. I, I don't want to say their names, but I've been focusing on my business, honestly, lately. So it's been really hard, like, you know, building it. I'm working on building an agency, you know, so. Yeah, speak about that. Well, that's like, full what are you up to now? It's cool, man. Yeah, just like working on, like, I went back to school when I retired. Yep. UCLA, Concordia, Irvine. Um, for a couple of classes um, in digital marketing, digital analytics, social media, you know, learning how to even like manage AWS and GitHub, which is like more technical. That's, but uh, that's really cool. They, yeah, they, I was obviously, learning how yeah. to how to product manage, how to project manage. Because when you look at athletes, you know, we're, we're so dependent on other brands and companies. Mm -hmm. Once they don't like us, or say you're, you're done, you're done. Right. So you have no data that you drove to these streams. To resell to that consumer who likes you, you got to do it all over again. Right. You see what I'm saying? And that's super frustrating to me. Even when I even when I got suspended, I had my own sneaker. Right. Somebody hits me, and then I get suspended for reacting, right. and I didn't even start it. You know. So that whole thing once again. So for me, it was like, how can you get involved in different businesses on the back end, administration, accounting, right. data capturing side. Right, and I was in, and I was la I'm laser focused. When I'm focused on so that's it. So I was super laser focused on school. And when I retired, I, I studied for my series seven. I was gonna do my series seven. I was gonna coach full time. I was gonna rap full time or do digital marketing full time. It was the four things I said I'm gonna do. And as I, I studied for my series seven, I was like, Nah, I don't want to be behind the desk. Mm -hmm. And it's all, it's all I was gonna have to do. So I, I X that out. Coaching, I didn't want to be back coaching right away because then I'm once again I'm away from my family. Right. You know, for another 20 years, you who, yeah, who yeah, knows? Yeah. So I X that out right away. Then it was, um, then rapping, I didn't want to be in the clubs because I was going to do pick one thing and just do it full time. Yeah, mm -hmm. all the energy. Yeah, all, every bit of the soul. So then I didn't want to be out and away from my family again. So that was like coaching. So I just X that out. Then I went back to school. And when I found out that I had the endurance, like to just sit and, you know, I had to go into the classroom because I can't learn online. Yeah. When I found out I had the endurance, I was like, damn, I really like school. So I just stuck with it and just stay with it. So I had to do like legal classes where you can read 150 page PPMs, mm -hmm. like all type of stuff. Mm -hmm. That I, And I just locked in and I had about four years where it was stressful because I didn't, I didn't know what I was doing at one point. I didn't know if it was gonna work. Um, I wasn't training, I was super unhealthy, you know, but I just told, you know, I kind of just stay with it, stay with it. and. You know, definitely sitting in a different spot from that perspective. No, no I saw I saw on Spectrum they did a, a backstage on you and you're doing classes and it's very, very impressive. You know that because in LA you got to think about it. You got time with the time. Mm -hmm. Like I'm like, damn, my family didn't want to leave, so I'm like, I wanted to leave LA because I'm like, it's too much time. Where you gonna go? 
Indiana? Indiana? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. Indiana. Well, I've, been, I've, I've been in Indiana. I don't know. Indiana, I don't know how much he's... I love Indiana. Like, I love Indiana. What do you do there? It's like I love I love Indiana. It's like, like people live in Indiana. <laughs> no, <I'm laughs> they like no, just like cows. People go to the store, they go to they go no, food no, shopping. I've, been, I've, been Bloom- I've stayed in Bloomington before. It's like where, would, where would you stay if you lived in Indiana? I, if I was in Indiana, I'll just stay maybe outside of Indianapolis. Mm-hmm. Really? Yep. Man, that's a whole I new lifestyle, Indiana. you know, being in LA and then being in a small town. I, mean, I love Indiana. And my family, a lot of but my family. We're from New like, York. We could really adapt to anything. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It don't really, yeah. We could dumb it up, party, and then dumb it all yeah. down. <laughs> yeah. From, go from the highlights of Hollywood to the hood hood. Right. Yeah. So you got well, both. Them both. <clears throat> yeah. 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 But then LA guys said, so you get so much time. But I, I was really worried about that. That's why I said, I got to be in school. Mm-hmm. I need all my time going yeah. right. somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. I want to talk about the current Lakers. Um, before we do that, I want to get your take on the in-season tournament because a lot of Laker fans were upset that they raised it. Lamar said 100% they should raise it. But I want to get your take on that. Yeah, it's incredible, man. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, it's a banner. It's a championship. Well, I mean, the, their defense is we don't hang anything but a championship banner. There was a championship banner. That was, <laughs> no, it wasn't. What do you mean? It was an in-season tournament championship. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the championship. They're saying that's finals. A, that's, I mean, well, we had to play our schedule. Right. No, I know. And every, and every team wanted it. You could tell they wanted it. Yeah, so we played our schedule and we won. So what's your take on it? Why not hang it? Hang it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's great. I, I mean, I wish we had an in-season tournament. Yeah? <laughs> Hell yeah. And, and Lamar was a fan of it being in Vegas. What do you yeah, think? That yeah, would have been like, big, bro. That's... <laughs> oof. Oh, we would have we would enjoyed that. Oh my god, yeah. we was we king in Vegas anyway in the, yeah, as a Laker. Laker um, Lakers is really Vegas' team. It's really yeah, yeah it's really true. Until they get yeah, one, I've been there many times. In, you know, summer league, they show love. They love the Lakers there. So let's we'll talk about the Lakers right now. Crazy win last night. They beat the Clippers. Twenty one point comeback. LeBron shooting a career high forty percent from three in his twenty first season. Outscored the Clippers. What what are you thinking right now about the Lakers? What what's their what's what are, what's their ceiling and what do you think they need to work on most? I mean, I you know, I feel like I didn't think they were gonna be a number one team this year, honestly. I thought they would be like, you know, four or five. Really? So I think they are a little bit under they, they was injured. But you you gotta think about the number one slot. You know, you, as, as, not even counting the the teams that got better. We we can't see that yet. But obviously it's Minnesota and OKC, but yeah, but Denver Nuggets. That that Joker, yeah, he's a he's a he's a different player. So, yeah. and then you you would think that the Warriors would be four or five. They wasn't. Yeah, now they out. coming. Then you got Kawhi coming back. Mm-hmm. Now you it's got wild. these Clippers. You know Phoenix. I think the Lakers is doing what they're supposed to be doing. I don't think they deserve like any bad mouthing because look at the other teams. Everybody's good in the West, man. You really? I mean, you look at it one through ten. Any one of those teams, you know, can contend. Um, but yeah, Lamar, what do you think about? Well, I'm lost because when I think Lakers, I think triangle offense. When I don't see the triangle yeah. offense, I don't really. He loves see the triangle it. offense. I don't really see the. Lakers. I did too. You know, you what think I'm it'll work in today's NBA? Because yeah. Lamar's preaching for it. What yeah, do you mean in today's NBA, what are you talking about? Was... I'm saying the game's a little di- different now. Not who? Michael Jordan could play in the NBA today, right? Kobe Bryant could play in the NBA today, right? Triangle works. They mastered it. They won. I don't understand how you get away from something that worked for you, but. I hear you. They should be running it from the G League on up, but that's a different conversation. It's a great offense. It wins, you know. E- even the Warriors run runs a couple aspects of the triangle. So why do you think it's never been used again? Because they don't want to learn it. it. Takes time to learn it. It ain't just throw the ball out, set a pick. This accidental offense yeah. that Kobe Bryant talked about. For a couple more things about the current Lakers, and then we'll finish up. But where do you think LeBron stands all time? Because what he's doing in his 21st season at this age, you know, shooting a career high from three, the way he, you know, treats his body, where, where do you think he stands? Meta. I think, um, well, I think you, you got to take everything in consideration. LeBron lasts from three, I guess, three generations. And then he, so he came in in a tough spot. Two thousand four, that was a tough era. Yeah. Then it yeah, was getting a little bit. Defensive player of the year that year, right? Yeah, defensive player yep. of the year. It was still getting a little bit. It was it was it was becoming more a little soft, but not really. Then he was there in two thousand ten. You know, then he was extended his career with the a softer softer rules. So imagine being able to 
your last couple of years, nobody can touch yep. you. So he's just, you know, he's taking advantage of what's in front of him. You know what I mean? It's like if somebody's boxing and you, if the matchmaker puts a bum in front of him, that's who you up. fight. Yeah. You know what I mean? So LeBron's able, <laughs> I think with his, uh, his longevity is incredible. But if, I, but if I had to really like pick, you know, I feel like, I like Wilt. I honestly like Wilt Chamberlain. I feel like nobody can see Wilt. You know, um, as the greatest. Very rarely he's off my. Very rarely he's not number one to me. And then you look at MJ, nine scoring titles, six championships, D D P O Y, yep. all defensive team. Like you know, and then you can add LeBron stats, number one scorer, all that stuff. But when you talk, you can't really compare to that. That stat line that I know with MJ is, it's probably number one, or number two. I think Wilt did a little couple, a couple more things more impressive. I mean, to be real, I like I love LeBron James. I love the way he played the game. But you know, as a basketball player, I think what make you the best is like if you sum it all up, you can score. You know how you score, doing everything. But you gotta look good. What do we? What do we put <laughs> Kobe? Kobe's in our top five, right? You gotta look good when you play basketball. Of course, of course. I mean, right look good. on the court. You probably want to wear some Jordans. <laughs> I'm just saying, right? Nah, yeah, I mean. Off the court, <laughs> you from the hood, you probably want to finish your outfit with some Jordans. <laughs> you know what I mean? Michael Jordan came out with sneakers in 1989. They was expensive. They cost $150. Those same sneakers cost $400. Yeah, no, that's crazy. His impact on the sneaker game, like, Hundred percent. I, I mean, think it's something to roll up for. He's a billionaire now. You know what I mean? Yeah, really, really, really impressive. You want to be the, you want to have the best shit on your feet when you play basketball. Jordan's yeah. is the best shit you can have on your feet. And I, I feel like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, on the court and off the court. And also, I think LeBron, he, did, LeBron did put himself out there. So we, we talk about the, he's very proactive, active, act. I'm not activist, but proactive. So from that perspective. You know, what would have happened if Jordan was to put himself out there? He never did. So right. LeBron is losing a little bit. You got to take a lot of things in consideration. You know, so, I mean, what, what did he do the right thing by, you know, being active? Right. You know, did it hurt his chances, you know, on being but like... You, you know, you can't compare, like... It's tough. It's different it's different times. Different great. times, different you know people. I mean? it's different, you yeah. could, you, you're wasting your time comparing what's great. Just appreciate it while I was here, at least. So That's you can it. Deal. People do sleep on Larry Bird being in the top 10. I just want to throw that out there. No, he's Lamar, what do you think? Bird in the top 10? Hell yeah. I feel like it's just, 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 just think like about, what, okay, you, I was talking about what Kobe was for the culture, right? Think about what Larry Bird was for the white culture. <laughs> I well, mean, seriously. Really, I mean, him and, in the 80s playing against the right. best nah, you're right. black basketball players. You yeah. know when, they, when a black dude see a white dude on the court, he's like, I'm going to bust his ass. Is that how it is? What? <laughs> I'm asking, bro. Well, uh, yeah. yes, that's how it is. I'm gonna bust his ass. Really you're gonna, not gonna get off. Yeah, you're like, not. You really don't not trying to lose anybody. But and yeah, so yeah. like a <laughs> white guy in the '80s was busting their ass and then talking shit. And like, talking right, to I'm him. gonna yeah, hit yeah, this yeah. shot in your face, bitch, right here from this spot. You change your culture. Take this. Boom. And talking to him. Yeah, people sleep on Larry. You know what I mean? People like, forget yeah, that ain't guy. gonna never be done again. Indiana guy. A white dude talking shit on a basketball court. Like Luka Doncic. But not like Larry. Cooper Flag is probably he tough. That kid. We'll see. Oh yeah, we'll see. It, 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 it is. We'll it is see. a few. He out there. He, that kid is nice. And then also you gotta think about it. Like I feel like, you know, if you're not playing ball every day, like we, you know, in terms of black ball players, we playing con condensed basketball. Yeah. If you're not playing in these areas and you won't get better, and some people do go. Like you gotta to understand, the urban like, communities. like that kid Cooper Flag. I respect him just for being white. <laughs> and going out and competing the way he is, busting their ass like that. Because that really takes heart. Because he, I know you're playing against brothers. Well, yeah, all the all time. All AU. And I know they're looking at him like, <laughs> nah, you ain't going to do it to me. And he busting their ass. Yeah. That shit take heart and pride. Yeah. Nah, it's so exciting to see. respect the Cooper Flat. Huh? It's going to be exciting to see when he comes to the league. Yeah, he going to be number one pick. Really, huh? Yeah. We'll yeah. finish off with a couple of questions. Um, more of a little rapid fire. So I asked Lamar this question. I was like, who is the toughest player he's ever had to guard? He said, Zach Randolph. So I want to ask you. You're that makes sense. So I want to ask you, who's the toughest player you've ever had to guard? I mean, it's definitely a lot of the same ones. You know, you got Kobe and I, I, I'm MJ, man. MJ is incredible, yo. 
people, if I played against MJ at the end of his, when he was coming back. And I, as I compare that to when I played against Kobe and when I played against LeBron, and MJ was older, and I'm just like taking all this information, and this guy, you cannot let him catch the ball. And the same thing with Kobe too, but they just so different. MJ is a little bit more fundamentally sound, right, than Kobe. MJ's his movements is all efficient. Kobe was too, but Kobe had swag. He was going out there with it. Yeah, MJ Kobe's out like, here with it, swags, doing the same angle. thing. But I think MJ, because he was so fundamentally sound. He was more precise, like in some movies. It looked like he was doing it the right way. Yeah. Right? Whereas it looked like Kobe was doing it the wrong way. But it's still but okay. it's still a flawless fundamentals, footwork, pivots. Kobe had everything MJ had, you know, but because MJ was super diligent on fundamentals, it was it was harder to guard that. And he's quick and strong. He was he was strong. That's a that's the other thing people forget about MJ. Right. MJ was strong. Yeah. <laughs> he strong? put this what? MJ put that hand on you. Yep. You're not moving. You ain't going nowhere. And then he posting you up, backing you down. You see what I'm saying? So I think he had a couple different. He's like MJ is like in between Kobe and LeBron. He's strong, like LeBron had the skill set yeah. of Kobe. Yep. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, MJ was yeah. strong as LeBron. MJ not LeBron's heavier, but MJ yeah. pound for pound. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look how many people he locked up. He would give them thirty, and they couldn't get off. Right. <laughs> he was all big, posting up small forward. They couldn't post up MJ. With the exception of a few, but yeah, MJ was MJ was tough really one. tough to guard. Makes sense. I mean, he's Michael Jordan. But Kobe don't like that. I told Kobe that I said that one day. I never get a call from Kobe. This, my phone was ringing, and you know, you know, you get a, a phone call from somebody important. Yeah, hey, I got to pick, pick this up. <laughs> <laughs> I said, hold on, wife, baby, baby, I got some. Kobe's calling me. I don't know. <laughs> hey, yo, what you talking about? Uh, MJ number one. <laughs> And he was telling me why he was number one. No, because Lamar, he's yes, on the bus. Son. I'm going to keep it real with you. We were on a bus one night. I think this is when after uh, he hit his ninth game winner against Milwaukee, my nigga come on the bus and said, in front of me and Fish, he's like, yo, I'm better than Mike. I said, what? Uh, he might be, honestly. He said, yo, I'm better than Mike. I was like, bean, like. You're going a long way with that. Like You said that? I'm like, why my nigga? <laughs> <laughs> you better than Mike? That's how you feeling? Okay. But in, 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 in his head, he knew he probably- he I mean, really if, if he him. really said that, in his, you know he felt it. You know, he just hit his nine. Yeah, he's, 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 he's he hit killer. nine walk-offs that season. That's crazy. You know, he's- You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, Nine oh, walk-offs, three, two, one, and- now nah, that's crazy. Yeah. Three, two, one. Uh, nah, there's a video on YouTube that's 40 minutes of his game. Three, two, one. Uh, nah, it's crazy. That's three. Three, two, one. Uh, you think he got more? What, you think he got more game four. winners than Jordan? Man, he hit nine. One I think season. he does have more game winners. I don't know, than but beaters? he might have more buzzer beaters yeah, than Jordan. Think, I mean, he hit nine one season. Yeah, yeah three, Jordan two, don't have one, a lot of buzzer beaters. Uh, Kobe had buzzer beaters. Yeah, three, buzzer two, beaters. One, uh, yeah. That's seven. <laughs> uh, what's your NBA all dog team? All what dog? All dog team. <laughs> oh man! I um, hope you're in there. All, all like all time. All time. Uh, actually no. Isaiah how about Thomas. Players mm. that you played with, like or against. I just do okay. Well, let me. I already said Isaiah okay, Thomas. Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Isaiah was a dog. Isaiah was a dog. Um, Dennis Rodman, yeah. dog. a dog. Um, Ben Wallace is a dog. It's facts. He's a dog. Uh, I think I was a dog. Dude, Ron on test was a dog. <laughs> I think I might have been a dog. Yeah. I think Shaq was a dog. Shaq was, Shaq a, dog. was a dog. Shaq was dirty a dog. dog. Charles Barkley, dirty dog. <laughs> yeah, Barkley, yeah. You and and obviously that list, can, anybody can be fit in, but yeah. Right, right, right. Sha Shaq, Shaq right. was a dog. I like Shaq. Shaq was a dog. Yeah. yeah. He actually let people off the hook. In what way? You know, he didn't hurt. He could have hurt more people. He, he, he made sure they was okay. Yeah. He could have he really did more damage. You know, imagine somebody grabbing you every time. You, imagine you walk into the grocery store and somebody's grabbing you from putting the yeah, grocery the on most, the counter. Most nah, I'm not going to let you put it on the counter. Intimidating. Nah, you can't put that egg Dude in I've ever seen on the court. Yeah. You're just grabbing him and grabbing him and grabbing him. He's not just tall. He's big, like, oh, wide. No, no, no. What, what's your all-dog team? <laughs> Try to give me five. Barkley, Shaq. Uh... 
Ron, Kobe, Jordan. I like that. Yeah, Kobe was a dog too. Oh, See, yeah. it's just hard because you think of the athleticism. Five, yeah. Yeah. Kobe was definitely a dog. How he approached the game. The way I play, competed against Kobe, like I was waiting for him to submit. I was waiting for him to be like, because I'm giving him my all. Like I, I've seen these stars like, hey, you better come on, not today. Don't come on. Kobe wanted to embrace him. <laughs> I've never seen him like, like go away from the yeah. physical, physicality. Nah, he confrontation. He loved it. He came back. Yeah, he's, he's definitely a dog. Um, and last question, what was the inspiration behind all of your like wacky wild haircuts? Oh man, I guess I, Anthony Mason, definitely. You know what I mean? Like New York, you want to be like Anthony Mason. So that's just not, it's not my thing. Yeah, you had it going for like, a minute. With yeah, I was going, so. yeah. You yeah. colored it, everything that you had defense in different languages. I had defense in Hebrew, Japanese, yeah. Chinese. I had mostly defensive stuff that yeah. was in different languages. So it was like you defense. had some crazy Laker cuts too. I had some good Laker I cuts. Yeah, I actually got that. Yo, did you like? Did you enjoy living in Houston? Because I like I Houston, Houston is is for the culture. I like. I, I love Houston. I was. I thought they was gonna bring me back. I was looking at homes. I thought yeah, they was. I thought they was bringing me back. But I love Houston. Houston is great. My Rockets haircut was probably the best haircut I had. You guys are really cool in haircut, the playoffs. Bro. But then we, me and Benga, before we played against OKC. We both dyed our hair. Was it blonde, right? It was blonde. It was hot. We both dyed it at the same time. I don't know if Banga did that. <laughs> yeah, we both did Gosh. it. It was wild. Shout we out both to DJ Banga. Yeah, we got to have him on. Yeah. We need cool. yeah but yeah, I, I got the same day. haircut as you like four years ago. Oh, wow. I was like, yo, I'm going to get the Metal World Peace haircut. I got the, the Laker logo in the back of my hair. I'll show you after. But um, yeah, Shout out R.I.P. Anthony Mason. Man, A lot of that was Anthony Mason for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right, this is our last segment. We're going to finish up with some Meta World Peace trivia. I'm going to ask Lamar the question first, and then I'm going to ask you Meta. So okay. you know yourself, all right? All right, cool. You ready, Lamar? Good. What is Meta's career high in points? Um, he did it twice in with the Kings in 07. I would probably say 40, maybe a little bit under 40, maybe 38, 36. 39. 39. 39. I never have 40. 39. I never have 40. 39. 40. That kills me to this day. Yeah. Yeah, I never have. You have 40 in the league? Nah. Yeah, I you never had, had a cook so for, the, for the Houston. Twice. For the, yeah, for, for from three. Well, we never focused on that. We was like we team players, the, yeah, right? Yeah, so we, play, we played basketball. You could yeah. 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 Maybe get, yeah, get to the free throw. All right, right. rebounds. <laughs> for Meta, I would probably say 17. I think it's maybe 16. Yeah, 16. You're close. 16. That's good. 16. <laughs> Assists. In the NBA? In the NBA. I probably think he probably got it with Sacramento. About 11 or 12, probably. Damn. I'm going to say 12. 11. 11. 11. Yeah, you got it, Lamar. Yeah, I didn't pass much, honestly. <laughs> 11 is good, I really bro. didn't like pass. You got it for Sacramento? Uh, I think so. Oh, okay. Um, blocks, and he did this six times. Well, he was defensive player of the year. He's playing the perimeter. Seven blocks. I'm going to say five? Four. Four? Four? Oh, that's the times. most I got? Six I times. wasn't athletic, so I can <laughs> try. All right, but now, okay, we'll go steals. And you did this four times. Ten steals. Eight? Eight. 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 But you know your own shit. You <laughs> I really mean, do. Yeah. But I, I remember, because I remember, like, when I was playing in my prime, it was times I would almost get quadruple doubles. Yeah. yeah. No, eight times. I was always, like, you know, four blocks, but, you know, assists, steals, points, rebounds, right? Yeah. Not the blocks. So I was always at eight, like, steals, eight yeah. assists. I'm like, dang, right there. Yeah. Well, they couldn't quite get there. Two more. How many threes did Metal Peace make in his career? How many threes how in many his threes? career? Tough one. Or how many? Oh, shit. Playing small forward. 400? Yeah. Career? That's a Come lot. On. Or more you said than that. four for power, and now you say 400 for Metal. No, I'm just saying. I mean, how many? 700? Not 1,000? 1,500? Is, is it 1,500? 1,154. 1,100? 1,100. And the last question. I said, yeah, 1,500 a lot. Yeah. Last question. We asked this question to Powell, and you got it right. How many times has Metal Peace been ejected from a game? (laughs) How did I know (laughs) that was going to be the last? (laughs) Whoa. Um, 
Well, it's not screwed. The suspension probably don't count, right? No. Most, how many games did you lose with the suspension? 200? 150? 86. 86? Yeah, that was the biggest suspension. Not including every playoffs, yeah. Lamar, how, how many <laughs> how many ejections? Horrendous. Ferraro? Ferraro. 10. How many times have I been ejected? Yeah. Phew. Uh, You're good, Lamar. Is it 20? Nah, for 11. 11? Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I said 10, right? Yeah, you go. You, you were pretty good. Get that bread back. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, thank you so much, Matter, for coming on. It was a great doing, episode. Yeah. You know, bringing back the memories, 2010 championship. And you guys. It's an honor. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you. Seeing you guys evolve from kids to, you know, competitors to teammates. And then now see you guys doing well. It's great. And we got to do it again. We could have talked way more stories, yeah, man. Yeah, we got yeah, so yeah. many we'll stories. Uh, yeah. We'll see what the people think, but thank you, Matt. I really For sure. Appreciate Thanks, you, man. my guy. My guy. Right. Thanks no a lot. Sure.